So if you're a medical provider and you're using the free Hippocrates app, I'm gonna bet that you are not using that app to its full potential. How do I know? That I used Hippocrates for years, only accessing the medications, the dosing, and the things like the adverse side effects and interaction checker. Those things are great and worth it alone, but there's so much more that I've recently discovered that the app can do. Did you know that there are guidelines and tables, calculators, and decision trees all available in this one free app? It is amazing how much they give us. And I bet if you really learn the complete functionality of Hippocrates, you might end up actually replacing some of the other apps that you're using on your phone or that you've been thinking about getting. So stay tuned to the end, see if there's anything in here that can help improve your practice. Hello! Welcome. So one thing that I mentioned in my last video is that I think it's really helpful if you are going to be using medical apps that you organize them into one folder on your phone. It makes it so much easier when you're in a hurry to find the app that you need instead of having to scroll through screens of various apps that you might have. Now let's dive in and see what the free version of Hippocrates has to offer. So when you open up Hippocrates, you're gonna see right away some of the new features. The first thing that, that it has is the COVID resources. So when you click on that, it's gonna come up with a list of our articles about COVID. These are pretty much arranged just as they come out. They put the newest article at the top. However, you can go down here to the bottom right, click the resources tab. It's gonna give you some topics there, but if you scroll down to a little bit further, then it's gonna let you filter by the specific topic that you're looking for. Really helpful resource and they've done a, a pretty good job of trying to organize it so that you can find what you're looking for. So the other new thing that they've added is CME, which is really exciting. Very similar to up-to-date having free CME. You can get CME right here in um, the Hippocrates app. So when you get in here to the catalog, you can scroll down and see what's available there, or you can search for something specific by going to that search bar and typing in what you're looking for, or you can go to the filter bar and then you can filter by your particular specialty or by clinical topic. Everyone loves free CMEs, right? Okay, so the next category, the drugs, we're not gonna to talk too long about that. I think pretty much everybody um, who's ever used Hippocrates knows how to use it. One thing I wanted to show you is that if you don't know the exact name of the drug that you wanna type in, or you just kinda of wanna, uh, curious to see what drugs are available for a particular clinical topic, you can just go to that topic. So like say you go under dermatologic and then you want to look up um, any of the topical antibacterials, you click that and then it's gonna give you the whole list right there. So if you know you need a topical antibacterial but you can't quite think of the name exactly to type it in or how to spell it, you can just go to that category or if you just wanna see what different options are available for that clinical condition. Okay, go back to the drugs and say you type in like lisinopril for an example. I'm just gonna go through this really quick. It shows you different brand monographs that are available. It's gonna show you the subclass it's in, any black box warnings, adult and pediatric dosing, adverse reactions, drug interactions, and then it'll let you put in you know, multiple drugs to see what, if there's any interactions with that particular medication, things you should be monitoring if it's good in pregnancy or lactating patients, the pharmacology, and then the manufacturing prices and the pill pictures. Another thing I wanted to show you under the manufacturer and pricing, this is something I wasn't using and I didn't even think about. I would then end up going over to GoodRx to look up this information. So you'll see you go down here to the approximate retail price and it doesn't let you, like in GoodRx, put in the exact quantity and dosing and things. It's just picking a quantity of 30, but it does show you by the different dosings pretty much what the average price is gonna be for that medication. Just if you're trying to get an idea, is this a $300 drug or a $3 drug or a $3,000 drug? Right there will give you just a quick uh, view of that. So we'll go back home. Um, the interaction check, that's just another way to get to check the interactions, different medications where you can add them in with this plus button and then see what it, you know, if there's any interactions there. The pill ID, that's something that I never really use that much. I didn't really know that you can search for medication by just like shape and color and if it has a score in it or if it has anything printed on it. Sometimes that's all patients know. And I always thought that there was no way to really find it because there are just so many different manufacturers of, of medications. But if you go to the pill ID, you can put in shape. So let's say it is a round tablet 
we're going to say it's pink in color and the patient is telling us that it's got like a cross shape scoring on it. Put that in and it comes up, there's two matches. And so now we've narrowed down what the medication is. So if you look at the list, it's got like four results or four or five results, but you know what they're taking the medication for, you can usually figure out what the medication is that they're, tr they're trying to say that they're taking. So you'll see that the some of the things here are locked, the diseases, the labs, the alternative medicines, and the infectious disease treatment selector, and then the ICD-10 codes on the next page. Those are all the paid applications, but we still have so much more to talk about in the free section. Now we're gonna get into some stuff that might really blow your mind. So the first one here is guidelines. So we're gonna go here to the recently added and look at the Lyme disease diagnosis and treatment. And you go in here, it's gonna give you the guidelines on Lyme disease. A lot of these have some decision trees to, so you can put some information about your patient and get dialed into exactly what you need to know. So I'm gonna say that this person is presenting with a typical Lyme disease and they need initial diagnosis and treatment, um, and they've got some early localized Lyme disease symptoms. So it's gonna take me with those, that information I gave it, it's gonna take me right to the guidelines that I need, telling me what the empirical treatment is, and giving you a table with the different choices of treatment and the dosing and the suggested duration of treatment. And then it's gonna go on on the bottom, it's gonna tell me some other information I might need, like if you need to initiate any testing or anything at that point. Normally that information I probably would have gone to up to date or Medscape or something like that to try to find. But if you become familiar with the app, you know it's right there in Hippocrates. So let's go back and let's look up here um, to the specialties. When you click that tab, you can go to exactly what you're looking for if you've got something in neurology. And here it's got adult low back pain diagnosis and treatment. And again, it's gonna walk you through, it's gonna make you um, choose some things, I'm just gonna choose stuff. So right away, because I said that they had red flag symptoms, it's gonna tell you that you need to immediately refer them, they need imaging and higher level evaluation so that there's no long-term neurologic damage. So you can go through any of the sim systems and find anything, hypertension guidelines, all kinds of things are right there. And I'm gonna show you some of the other things we're gonna look at. There's actually multiple ways to get to different guidelines and tables. Some of it is a bit redundant, but it's great because you don't have to remember which tab you go into to find it. Let's look over here to formulary. This one, um, I don't know how useful you'll find this, but um, if you do have a patient that has a particular insurance and you find it in the list, you can add new formulary there. You can search by state and by formulary, say that this person comes in and they work at 7-Eleven, and you can add that formulary. And now when you look at the medications, when you look up the medications and have that formulary selected, it's gonna tell you exactly what tier the medication falls in. Again, another helpful tool for patients who are concerned with pricing on medication and a way that you can help them quickly there in the office. We're gonna go over to the second page, which I didn't even know that there was a second page <laughs> until recently, or well, I might've known it was there, but I just never really paid attention to it. So we're gonna to go to calculators. So under this calculators tab, you're gonna find a lot of different things that are very useful. First, it's gonna show you anything that you've already saved as your favorites. Then uh, you've got the dosing calculator here and IV drip calculator. But then there's more sophisticated calculators like you might find on MD Calc. So if you go here to, to the specialty and categories and go to cardiology, you'll see it's got you know the CHADVASC risk scoring, heart score, QT interval correction. How about like the DVT prob probability? So the Wells scoring system, you go into here, just like any of the calculators, it'll have you, I'm just clicking random things, it'll have you click things that um, your patient has. And then this particular score that I put in came to a two and that patient has got moderate probability. Again, where I mentioned before, I would have gone to up to date to look up some of those guidelines. Here, I probably would have gone to MD Calc to find those calculators. Another thing that's important to remember is that you can favorite these. So you can customize this and make sure you can find those quickly. You just go up here to the top and hit that star button and then I'll show you where it's gonna put all your favorites. So you can favorite guidelines, you can favorite tables, dose calculators, um, anything like this. So if you're getting value out of this video, please smash the like button down below. Let me know if this is content that is helping you out.
So if you click under here to clinical criteria, it's going to give you screeners or things that help you make a clinical diagnosis. So let's look here for like androgen deficiency in men. So you can go through here and, you know, ask them the questions. It reminds you what questions to ask, but then also you can score it as they're giving you answers. And then it'll tell you here that um, they possibly have an androgen deficiency and why. Again, that also helps you with charting. You can put in there that they meet one of the major and two of the minor criteria for androgen deficiency, and therefore you are sending them for additional testing or whatever. Okay, come back here to decision trees. Um, this will help you give you an example, like if you think somebody may have um, benign positional vertigo, you click on that. It'll ask you if there's any hearing loss present. You say yes, and then it's going to tell you it's probably not BPV. So, you know, you need to go back to the drawing board on that. But let's say you had said no, there is no um, hearing loss. They've had more than one attack. And then it's going to ask you if they've had a history of an ear injury. And you put no, and it says that it's probable that it's benign positional vertigo. And then a summary of what the decision points were. So then that's helpful. You can just take those and stick it in your charting. It says patient likely has BPV due to the fact that they have no history of ear injury, they have no hearing loss, and they've had more than one vertigo attack. So it can help you be a little bit more concise in your charting as well. So not only does it save time for you to look it up and to see if you're on the right track and if you're, if you're making the right decisions, but also um, to summarize the information to put it in your chart. And the last one, the unit and dose conversions, uh, like if you want have a patient on a benzo and you want to switch them to a different kind, you can put the medication in and figure out um, the dose conversions to the, the new medications. Okay, and then under tables here, this will give you more information. So say you're working in primary care, you're not a gynecologist, you ha you're mainly dealing with older patients and you have this younger patient come in and they want to be put on birth control pills and they really want to make sure that it's you know low estrogen and you know that there's a million birth control pills and you can't remember which ones are, are low and which ones are the biphasic or the triphasic. You can go here to the tables, go to OB-GYN, look up the oral contraceptive pill by hormonal activity, and then it has it broken out for you with the, the low, the mediums, the low, high lows, what, whatever. And then also shows you whether they're biphasic, triphasic, and so on. So it's taken a huge list and narrowed it down to just a, a few good choices for you. And then the last two things here is the picture quiz. Um, you can just look up these and go through some of these case studies to help you learn some more. And then finally, the favorites tab, that's where I told you earlier, you can favorite medications, you can favorite, um, like one thing I'd even show you on the tables, lab results, normal lab results values, right there, saved. So you have a quick reference, don't have to go to the computer to look that up somewhere. And then any of the guidelines, calculators, anything you can save right there. So you can really customize this tab to make it extremely useful for you. But one last thing I want to show you is that just like you can search for a particular drug by searching up in that top bar, you can also search by category um, or table or whatever it is you're looking for. So up here, um, if we wanted to find, if I didn't already have it saved, you could go up here and type lab values and then you're gonna see that. You can go up here and type Wells score and there's that DVT probability Wells um, score system. So I bet you're probably pretty surprised at all the things that Hippocrates can do. If you already knew it, then then that's great. And you're probably one of the few people that are actually using this app to its fullest. But for the rest of you, I hope that you saw something that was kind of mind blowing and that you had no idea that that app can do. Uh, I hope that you go through, spend some time customizing it, saving the things for your favorite so that you can make this a really quick and handy resource. You open it up, just go to your favorites tab and you've got everything you need right there. And potentially replace some things like MD Calc um, or maybe GoodRx and have everything in one spot. So I hope that you would share down below in the comments if you know of some apps that, that you like better or apps that have been really practiced transforming for you um, or if you know some different functionality about these, this app that I didn't discuss. Put it down below, share it with others, let us learn from each other and improve our practices. And I'll see you next time, bye.